Hi everyone, this is Mrs. GA, and today we're going to learn about the derivatives of logarithmic functions. All right, go ahead and pause the video and give this form of a try. Hit play when you're ready to check. All right, go ahead and check your work here. Um, so for this uh, for part A, I just use that power property and I move the exponent to the front. And for part B is a combination of um, the first three properties. Um, so you can see here I use the product property and then the quotient property. And then afterwards I use that power property to move the exponents out front. Um, so just remember when you're expanding a logarithm, any values that are in the numerator uh, will end up as positive logarithms and any values that were in the denominator end up as negative logarithms. And notice you cannot expand the sum, um, it, a logarithm of a sum. It only works for the logarithm of a product or of a difference. All right, so let's start um, by seeing if we can find the derivative of y equals log base b of x. Um, so first, we can rewrite this logarithmic equation to help us solve for x. So just by the definition of a logarithm, we know that this means b to the power of y equals x. Or we can say x equals b to the power of y. Um, so from here, we can differentiate um, implicitly. So we're going to um, take d dx of both sides. We'll do d dx of x equals d dx of b to the power of y. Um, so the derivative of x is just 1. And then here we're going to need to use a chain rule. Um, here we'll use our exponential rule first for our outer function. So we get b to the power of y times natural log of b. And then we need to multiply that by the derivative of our, inter, uh, of our inner function, which is just y prime or dy dx. And then we just need to solve for y prime. So I'll just divide by everything that is not y prime. And then we would like to have this derivative in terms of x. Um, and then we can actually do this by replacing b to the power of y with x, because here we see that b to the power of y is equal to x. So our derivative of log base b of x is simply 1 over x times the natural log of b. Um, so you can see that x is the value inside the logarithm, and then here you have the value of the base of your logarithm. So here are our differentiation rules for logarithmic functions. Um, this first one is what we just showed. So the derivative of log base b of x is 1 over x times the natural log of b. And then the derivative of the natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. Um, notice I did put these absolute value signs around our x because remember this value within a logarithm must be positive. Um, that also is the rule for the base of our logarithm. Um, so if you see a negative value, just assume if you see the natural log of negative x, just assume that x is negative. So the resulting is positive. Um, but our derivative is simply 1 over x. All right, so let's see if we could give a couple of these a try together. Um, so here we're going to find y prime. So we'll need to use our chain rule. Um, so first the outer function is the log base 2 function. So we do 1 over x, which in this case is 3x plus 1, times the natural log of our base, which is 2. And then to complete our chain rule, we need to multiply it by the derivative of our inner function, which is simply 3. Um, so y prime is 3 over 3x plus 1 times the natural log of 2. All right, let's look at um, part 2 together, or part B. Sorry, this isn't labeled. Um, so for this one, we need to use our chain rule again. However, this time our outer function is actually our exponential function, and the inner function is the natural log function. So we're going to start with our exponential rule here. So it's 3 to the power of natural log of x um, times the natural log of our base, which is 3. And then we need to complete our chain rule by taking the derivative of our inner function. And the derivative of natural log of x is simply 1 over x. So again, all of this is the derivative of our um, exponential function with the base 3. And then this is the derivative of the inner function, which is our natural log function. Um, and then this, we can just rewrite it 
as 3 to the power of natural log of x times the natural log of 3 all over x. All right, so I have one for you to try on your own, so please pause the video and give it a shot. All right, so here we do need to use our chain rule. Our outer function is our natural log function, so it's simply one over x, but we're maintaining sine of x for x. And then the derivative of our inner function, which is sine, is just cosine. And then if you simplify that, you end up with cosine of x over sine of x, which is the cotangent of x. All right, let's give another one a try together. So here we have y equals the natural log of x to the fourth times sine squared of x. So um, to find this derivative, well, first of all, we're going to need to use the chain rule um, because we have something inside our natural log. So we can have 1 over x to the fourth times the sine squared of x. But then when I go to find the derivative of the inner function, we have to do product rule in here. And we have to do the chain rule um, for our sine squared of x. So this one, a um, lot to keep track of here. So to do our product rule, it's the first function times the derivative of the second using our chain rule. So we'll do the power rule first to sine of x times cosine of x, which is the derivative of the inner function, plus um, the second function, sine squared of x, times uh, the derivative of the first, so 4x cubed. All right, so if you look at what we're working with here, x, so we have 2x to the fourth um, sine of x cosine of x plus 4x cubed sine squared of x all over x to the fourth sine squared of x. So you'll see that we have a common factor of x cubed sine of x. So we can simplify this a little bit more. So we have 2x cosine of x um, plus 4 sine of x all over x sine of x. Um, and then this, if we wanted to simplify even more, we could split this up into two separate um, fractions. and we can um, simplify from here. So this would give us two times the cotangent of x um, plus four over x. So this is certainly one way we could find our derivative. We just really need to be careful because again, it's the chain rule and the product rule with the chain rule again inside. So there's definitely a lot to keep track of. Certainly not an easy problem. However, we do have another way we can go about this because um, this is a logarithmic function um, and we can actually um, expand this um, expression using our properties of logarithms and you'll see that in doing so, the problem becomes much, much, much easier. So let's see, at first if we can again expand our function, so we have um, the natural log of x to the fourth plus the natural log of sine squared of x, so I use my product rule there. And now we can use our power rule to rewrite like this. Um, I do want to remind you that sine squared of x just means the sine of x squared. So you can just move this exponent right out front. And now to find y prime, we simply need to take the individual um, derivatives of each part of that sum, which is much easier. So for this one, it just becomes 4 times 1 over x, which is the derivative of natural log. Um, plus 2 times 1 over sine of x times the cosine of x. So we do still need to use our chain rule here, but uh, much easier to keep track of. I'm sorry, that's our derivative, y prime. So y prime is 4 over x plus 2 times cosine over sine, which is the cotangent of x. Um, so you can see that we end up with the same um, answer. Um, it's just, I think, by using our properties of logarithms, the problem becomes much easier, a lot more straightforward, and a lot less to keep track of. So when you see a problem like this, I would highly recommend considering using your properties of logarithms to expand your equation before you take the derivative. 
All right, so I have another one for you to try, so please pause the video and give it a shot. All right, go ahead and check your work here. Um, so first I expanded using our quotient and then power uh, properties of logarithms. Um, and then that makes finding the derivative much easier. You do need to do chain rule here um, in the second part, but again, much um, easier way to find this derivative. And then just to simplify our derivative, I um, combined the two fractions by creating a common denominator and I simplified. All right, so now we're going to be taking the derivatives of a couple of functions that maybe at first glance look very similar, but they're all different functions, and I want to talk about what rule we would use for each one. So first, we have the derivative of e to the power of pi. So I want to remind you that e is just a, it's a constant, it stands for a value, and so is pi. So e to the power of pi is just some value, so this derivative is actually just zero, and for that we would use our constant rule. So don't be fooled by the fact that it looks like maybe an exponential function um, or maybe some type of power function. It's really just a constant function. Now let's look at this next one. We have pi to the power of x. Um, so for this one, we have an exponential um, function um, because our variable is in the exponent. So we would use our exponential rule and that gives us the derivative of pi to the power of x times the natural log of pi. And again, that's our exponential rule. Um, and that's because the exponent is in the variable. And we can see that our base here is a constant. Remember, pi is not a variable. It, it, well, it is a variable, but it's a variable that represents a constant. So it's not a variable like x is a variable. Okay, let's look at the next one. Here we have the derivative of x to the power of pi. So this one we would just use the power rule um, to find the derivative. So we have um, pi times x to the power of pi minus one. So again, this is our power rule. And we would use this because um, our base is the variable and our exponent is a constant. So this would just be like saying x cubed or x to the fourth. Um, so again, don't be fooled by seeing pi there. This is still just using the power rule. But then let's look at this next um, derivative, the derivative of x to the power of x. So if you have a variable in the base, um, you might be thinking, oh, okay, then I'm going to use my power rule. But look, you also have a variable in the exponent. So which one do we use? Do we use our power rule or do we use our exponential rule? So you can see that this doesn't really fit um, clearly into either of these rules. So this is where we're going to need to do something that's a little bit different. So for problems like that, when you have a variable in both the base and the exponent, we are going to be using what's called logarithmic differentiation. So to do this, um, you start by taking the natural log of both sides. Um, and then you use your uh, laws of logarithms to simplify. And then we're going to differentiate implicitly with respect to x and then solve for y prime. Um, so again, any time you have var a variable in both the base and the exponent, you have to follow this process. Just start by taking the natural log of both sides and go from there. All right, let's try one together. So here we have y equals x times the cosine of x. So you can see here we have a case where we have variable in the base and in the exponent. Um, so let's start by taking the natural log of both sides. And we're going to use our uh, properties of logarithms, that power property, to rewrite it like this. And now we're going to do um, implicit differentiation. So on the left, if you differentiate natural log of y with respect to x, we have one over y times dy dx. We have to use that power rule. And then on the right side, we are going to need to use our product rule. So we'll use our first function times the derivative of our second, which is just one over x, plus our second times the derivative of our first. 
Um, and then from here, we just need to solve for dy dx. So we have dy dx equals y times the cosine of x over x minus the sine of x times the natural log of x. Um, so here we can actually um, replace y with, the, with x, the power of cosine of x. So we can do a little substitution here. So our derivative is um, solely in terms of um, x. So that becomes x to the power of cosine of x. And here, if we want, we can um, combine um, the two into a single fraction. So cosine of x minus x sine of x natural log of x all over x. And then if you'd like, we can also move um, this denominator out into uh, the front. So our derivative dy dx would be x to the power of cosine of x over x times the cosine of x minus x sine of x natural log of x. And then um, because here we do have the same base, we have base x, we can use our properties of exponents and um, we can divide by subtracting our exponents. So an extra little step just to simplify it a little bit more. So it actually becomes x to the power of cosine of x minus one. Because remember this x has an exponent that is one times the cosine of x minus x times sine of x times natural log of x. So there's our derivative. And again, to find this derivative, we had to use our logarithmic differentiation, which we will always use anytime we have a variable in both the base and the exponent. All right, so I have one for you to try on your own. So go ahead and pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check. All right, go ahead and check your work here. Um, so uh, we always are going to start with these types of problems by taking the natural log of both sides um, and then we'll do implicit differentiation. Um, just be careful on the right side of our equation. We do need to use our um, product rule. Um, so we have the uh, first times the derivative of the second and you do need to use the chain rule here plus the second times the derivative of the first which is just one. And then from here we um, solve for dy dx. And I substituted y with the sine of x to the power of x, so our derivative is um, fully in terms of x. So it turns out that logarithmic differentiation is not only um, useful for when you have a variable in the base and the exponent, but it can also make some problems like this much, much, much simpler. Um, so if you look at this problem and you think about what you would need to do um, to start it, well, we would need to use our um, quotient rule and within that we would also have our product rule and our chain rule and it just gets really ugly and complicated really fast. Um, now you could do it without using logarithmic differentiation but when you have a problem like this that you know has a lot of different terms in the numerator and denominator try using logarithmic differentiation. So take the natural log of both sides so we have the natural log of all of this. And then you'll notice this is that same um, expression as in the warm up. Then when we start to um, expand this, we end up with 3 fourths times the natural log of x plus 1 half times the natural log of x squared plus 1 minus 5 times the natural log of 3x plus 2. So I used my product, quotient, and power properties of logarithms. Um, so to differentiate this, I think it's much easier than working with the original function. So we do need to do implicit difference, differentiation. So one over y times y prime. Um, here, this is just three over four x. Um, here, we have one over two times x squared plus one. We do need to do chain rule here. So times two x. And then here we have 5 over 3x plus 2, and then we do need to do chain rule again, so times 3. And now we just need to solve for y prime. Um, so we have y, y times 3 over 4x plus here, the 2s will simplify out, x over x squared plus 1 um, minus uh, 15 over 3x 
plus 2. Um, and then we could simplify, we could replace the y with our original function, which does, you know, it does look pretty ugly, but that's what we need to do. Um, so x to the power of 3 fourths times the square root of x squared plus 1 all over 3x plus 2 to the power of 5 times 3 over 4x plus x over x squared plus 1 minus 15 over 3x plus 2. Then, of course, we could, you know, create a common denominator here um, to simplify further. But I think for this, you guys get the point um, that using um, logarithmic differentiation actually makes this problem much, much, much easier. If you look at what our answer is, imagine using this route to get there. Okay, so just keep in mind that sometimes this is a tool that you will want to use. So just to summarize, um, you have to use um, logarithmic differentiation when you have a variable in both the base and the exponent, but you can choose to use logarithmic differentiation in some cases, um, especially cases where you have um, a complicated quotient with products within. Um, so just, again, remember that this is a tool that you now have in your, in your toolkit, um, and it might be beneficial sometimes to use it. All right, um, so that is all for today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching.